blessings and glory and honor that belongs to him. Amen. And I'm so grateful that he allows us to bless this holy name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful on this first Sunday of April to be a part of God's glorious praise this morning. We pray that you all brought something this morning to give God and we pray that you will see Jesus before you leave this service today see him in your tears you cry the hallelujahs you give him however it is I just pray that you see Jesus before you leave this service today amen we welcome you in the name of Jesus for all that he's done and we are so grateful to see so many beautiful faces this morning and gracious that God woke us up this morning and started us on our way a lot of times we seem to take that for granted, but when you start thinking about how good God really is to us, you know, and how he created us to give him praise just because he loved us and he adopted us as his children. And so we thank God that he loves us so much that he calls us his children. Amen. So we welcome you this morning in the name of Jesus. And we praise you, and uh, for those who may be viewing this later on, we thank you for continuing to be a part of this church service. Uh, we pray one day when we can go live, and if you're at home, you can, you can watch it live as it's streaming over the internet. Amen. Amen. I call the worship this morning. This is the good news which we proclaim to you. Walk in the light of his love. Live in the light of his teachings and hear his word. Come, let us worship the one who overcame death. Let us all read. Let, let us celebrate, celebrate the, the triumph of our Lord. Amen, amen. At this time, we will have a selection by our choir. Lord, everyone. Amen. Praise God. Y'all gonna hear my voice squeak a little bit, but you know what? I don't care. Amen. All right. I'm gonna praise God anyway. Amen. And I would like for y'all to stand up and just worship with us on this song. You know, all these contemporary songs, my voice might match this a little bit. Amen. <laughs> we love you forever. We love you forever. Love you forever. Lord. We love you forever. We love you forever. We love you forever.
worship forever. We praise you, O oh God. We love you, O oh God. Always and forever. Amen and amen. At this time, we go to John 1, or the first John and 1, 5 through 7. First John. God is light. In God, there is no darkness at all. If we stay, say that we follow him, and if we say we have fellowship with Christ, mm, while we are walking in darkness, then we lie. And the truth is not in us. But if we walk in the light, as Christ himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses us of all our sins. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Won't you pray silently with me? Almighty God, we stand before you. We bow our heads before you. We kneel before you this morning. We are unworthy to come into your presence. We are unworthy to call your name because of our many sins. But, oh God, we are so grateful and thankful that Jesus Christ, are, he's sitting there interceding for us right now. And so, Lord, we do not deserve any grace or mercy from you. If you dealt with us as we deserve, Father God, we would be pitiful right now. But we are so grateful and so thankful right now, God, that you didn't deal with us the way you should have. But you showed your mercy on us. We've sinned against you. Oh, Lord, and we have offended you. And yet, oh, Lord, as we acknowledge our sins and offenses, so also do we acknowledge you to be merciful, oh, God, to be a loving and favorable father, one that we could call on in the midnight hours, one that we can call on when things are not going according to your will and your purpose in our life, Father, we can call on you and you will be right there for us. For you sit high and you sit lo look low, Father God. You never sleep nor slumber. So, Father, we call on you right now because you are a merciful God. You are a gracious God. We come for all who turn to you right now, Father God. And so we humbly ask you this morning for for the sake of Christ, your son, to show mercy on us this morning. Forgive us of all our offenses, Father God. Forgive the sins of our youth and the sins of our old age, Father God. We play the fool so long, Father God, that we don't even recognize when we're doing wrong. But, Father, you are a God who look beyond our faults. So forgive the sins of our youth. And so, Father... Take possession of our hearts so that not only the actions of our life, but also the words of our mouth and the smallest thought of our minds may be guided and governed by you. Oh, Father, we ask this through your precious son's name, our Savior, Jesus Christ's name. We do pray, and we pray that the Holy Spirit will be with us and guide us this morning as we go through this service, Father God, and give you glory and to give you honor. Now and forevermore, we ask this in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. amen.
take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where Take me back for I first received. Amen. 
let us bow our heads. God, what can we say in response to the unconditional love you show us? And then while we were yet sinners, Christ, you died for the ungodly. That in Jesus we might be reconciled to you and be redeemed from the hand of the enemy. God, how we bless you today and thank you for the gift of your holy word, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We come, O oh God, that we might learn more of your word, to walk more into your way and into your will. I pray that you will speak to our head and to our heart, that you will encourage our spirit and our witness to the world. Now I ask that you will use me, O oh God, in your way to preach your word in Jesus name we do pray amen, amen. and amen as we prepare our hearts for the word of God today uh, if you don't mind navigating with me this morning to 1 Corinthians 15th chapter 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter of that book that letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. You have your Bible apps or your Bible. Turn with me. If you have found that passage of scripture, won't you say amen? If you have not, say wait for me. For I deliver unto you First of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. Praise God for the reading of his holy word. The grass withers as the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For well, the time that I was to share together today, I want to focus on the theme of, of this subject. You can make it. You can make it. Hmm. Please repeat that for me. Say, you can make it. You can make it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and hold their hand real tight and look at them eyeball to eyeball and tell them you can make it. If you can take it. If you can take it. Amen. 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 For a few of us remember those Sundays that come in the week after Easter. By then, the pastels finery is packed away in our closets. The lunch is not so great now. The anticipation of corporate worship has dropped down from the seasonal high and that we just felt just a week ago. There's less excitement, there's less panache, there's less decor, and more resemblance to the original Easter that we have every day. It's easy to forget that Easter, that Easter morning of A.D. 33 didn't come with big hats and bow ties and designer purses and suspenders. Those disciples huddled together in fear, not faith. They tended their, to their wounds and not so much flaunt with their tidiness. They wondered if they could take the punch of being without their leader as they went in hiding. And then, then they worshiped Jesus. They worshiped Jesus not because of what they had to offer, but because he bombarded their worlds with hope. He exploded the walls of their wretchedness with the irrefutable fact that the grave had not won. And death had, had been defeated. That the guilt and power of sin had been slain. He took a punch 
from death, but he was not defeated. They were astonished at best, uh, despairing at worst, and helpless in the least. And Jesus walked in with life-changing peace for them. Jesus stepped into that space in that same way that he steps in our lives right now by his spirit as the resurrected Christ Jesus, the reigning king, the Lord of all. He comes as one who is not served by human hands, but he comes and came to be a servant. But who gives to all mankind life and breath and everything? He comes as the one whose glory is contri not contrived by our praise, but whose glory compels our praise. Even today, even on this what seems to be a normal Or perhaps he compels our praise, especially on this normal Sunday, because we're reminded that worship is not about us bringing our best, but about finding him to be better. We come to him who first came to us, and we come not to give, but to receive. We, we come as those who need to hear his voice, feel his nearness, and know his a we come to God to say together, humbly and gladly in the Spirit's power with the heart that, Psalm, that, that, that David wrote in that Psalm 116. When he said, we, what shall we render to the Lord? Jesus, for all of the resurrection benefits that he brought to us, we will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon his name. My brothers and sisters, and all that are gathered here today, it's quite important for us, I believe, to realize that one of the most outstanding characteristics of the former heavyweight fighter, prize fighter, uh, Joe Frazier, was that without a doubt, he knew how to take a punch. Uh, he was a champion, but he knew how to take a punch. Yes, for any of you who know anything about that fight game, and I, I talked about Joe Foreman last week, I'm talking about Joe Frazier this week. Joe Frazier, without a doubt, knew how to take a punch. Not admittedly he was, now admittedly he was not the prettiest fighter. Uh, he was not the smoothest fighters. Uh, he was not the classiest of fighters. But old smoking Joe Frazier knew how to take a punch. And my brothers and sisters, I, I, I just believe that if old Joe Frazier could be in this service this morning and he could testify, uh, every one of us on this Sunday after Easter, I believe he will stand up and he will surely say this right here. You can, you can, he said, you can take it from, from me that if you want to make it in the ring of life, then you must learn how to take a punch. In other words, Joe Frazier will stand and testify to us saying, you can make it if you can take it. Yeah, yeah, I, I need an amen right there. Uh, you can make it if you can take it. But, but beloved, how many, of people, how many people in our society today uh, who is not making it because tragically, they just can't take it anymore. Huh? Lord, have mercy. I, I said, how many people are there in our society there of all ages, race and class and, and colors who are not making it because sadly, they can't take it anymore. Because the pressures of life, uh, the, visit, the vicissitudes of life has weighed us down so much. And the challenges of life are so great because the setbacks are so great. Many people are not making it because, because they just can't take it anymore. They throw in the towel. They throw their hands up in the air and say, I give up. I give in. I can't do this anymore. For, for alcoholics are, are all around us. Drug addict, addicts are all around us. Transients are on the streets and all around us. Fathers are killing their own children, their wives, and turning the gun on themselves. Th that's all around us. 
children are killing their own parents. Young people are on college campus are shooting and murdering one another. People everywhere are not making it because they just can't seem to take it anymore. If I'm speaking the truth this morning, just say amen. amen. So my friends, my brothers, and my sisters, uh, the story is told about this young man who one day he uh, decided to commit suicide. And so he climbed to the top of a bridge. And just as, as he was getting ready to jump, a policeman come along, Brother Darrell, and stopped him and said, hold, 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 up, hold on, young man. Please, please don't jump. I don't know what your problem is. But young man, please don't jump. Please allow me to come up there and talk to you. <clears throat> Let me talk it over with you. But the young man, he said, please, just don't jump. You have too much in life to live for. And so please don't jump. And so church, the young man, he allowed the policeman to come up to the top of the bridge and talk over the matter with him. And, and do you know, Mount Tabor, that after a few moments of conversation, both the young man and the police officer both jumped from that bridge <laughs> and committed suicide? I'm trying to get someone to see here today, amen, that so many in our society are not making it because they just can't take it anymore. I, I need an amen again. I, I, I said I Amen, right there. Because, but, 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 oh, Mount Tabor, my brothers and sisters, I'm so glad. I'm so glad this morning to report on this day that you come to church on a mighty good day, because I have extra good news for you. Because church, I've just received a Holy Ghost bullet from heaven, and the bullet, my friends, would have you to know that the regardless of whatever you find yourself going through right now, whatever the problem may be, whatever the situation may be, in the name of Jesus. You can make it if you can take it. Can I get a witness in here? I say with God on your side, whatever you may be going through as a born again, blood bought, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, anointed child of the living God, you can make it if you can. Oh, yes, you can. For I believe it was Winston Churchill who says, never, never, never give up. Mm -mm. The reason why the devil keeps bringing, you, bringing your past up is because he's running out of new material. Amen. So what's, what, what's, what's he got left to bring up your past? If he can get you and dupe you to believe what you did in your past, he, can, he got you. But I, I believe somebody said the devil is. Uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu says that when, you, when your dreams turn to dust, vacuum. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Galatians 9 says, and let us not be weary of well-doing, for in due season, huh, we shall reap if we faint not. First John tells us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And then David tells us in Psalm 30, verse number 5, that weeping may endure for a night. Huh? But if you just hold on, I said if you just hold on, if you just hold on for a little while, the Bible says joy. Y'all say it with me. Joy. Joy cometh in the morning. Ah, you can make it if you can take it. Now, let's, let's, let's go just a little bit deeper, and I'll be out of your way. I'm, I'm not going to be up here long today. The main and major reason, uh, uh, my friends, is why you can, you can make it is because, watch this, number one, God has you covered. Would you agree with that, Brother John? God has you, rewind, press play, y'all. I, I said, saints, the main and major reason for, why, beloved, you can make it is because God has you covered. Covered. You need to you need to know my brothers and my sisters and friends that I, I'm a great lover of cowboys and western movies and amen. Uh, somebody movies such as The Lonesome Dove, Shane, Gunsmoke, huh? Wells Fargo, Magnificent Seven, Unforgiven, and Tombstone. I'm a great lover, sister, uh, of, of cowboys, 
Western movies. And beloved, if you if you can recall sometimes, amen, a cowboy would say to his partner, you make your move. Because I've got you covered. Go on, make your move. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. I said, sometimes the cowboy would say to his partner, you make your move because I've got you covered. Well, my brothers and sisters, on, on our journey as believers, that's precisely what God says to his children. That's precisely what God says to you, and he says to me, you, you make your move. Mm -hmm. And I have you covered. I got you covered. Somebody say hallelujah this morning. Uh, 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 you make your move in the name of Jesus because I've got you covered. And so, my friends, you can make it if you can take it because God has you covered. Turn to your neighbor tell them God has you covered. His grace has you covered. His mercy has you covered. His favor has you covered. His peace has you covered. His wisdom has you covered. His omnipotent power has you covered. His goodness has you covered. His dependability has you covered. You can make it. I tell you, if you can take it, because God has you, he's got you covered. And brothers and sisters, while I'm, I'm on, on, on your runway and get ready to take off, because I know we got to have the Lord's Supper this morning, let me set this thing straight. Oprah cannot cover you. Mm -mm. Dr. Phil cannot cover you. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh P. Diddy can't cover you. He got enough going on right now in his world. <laughs> he can't. He can't do it. Uh, these 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 entertainers can't cover you. They got so much going on in their life. Can you say amen this morning? The psychic, the psychic cannot cover you. I don't know who's going. Somebody going to the psychic. The horoscope cannot cover you. The lottery, and I think somebody won it last night, can't cover you. Uh, I tell y'all, break me off a piece of $1.3 billion. It won't cover me, but I sure feel good. Mm -hmm. For all the young folk in the house, Huh? Pikachu, Pokemon, uh huh, huh, mm hmm. Slowpoke, Jar Tar, Harry Potter, Spider Man, Scooby Doo, Winnie the Pooh, and all those other Scooby Doo, SpongeBob, uh, the Black Panther, Batman, Superman, Skywalker, and Shrek cannot cover you. Only God, only Jesus, only the Holy Ghost will cover you. I tell you, church, you can make it if you can take it because God has you covered. And so, my brothers and sisters, when we interface with this magnificent text this morning that's before us, we, we, we have before us today th that they appear to be suggesting several major and most important issues. And I'm going to use three different scriptures today, but I'm, I'm going to concentrate on, 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 on 1 Corinthians, but there's th several major uh uh, important issues and insights. So here we here we go. I, I, won't, I won't be long this morning. I promise you, I won't be long this morning. First of all, our text suggests that we you can make it when you have been baffled. Number two, the text also suggests that you can make it when you have been betrayed. And then farther in the text, it suggests that you can make it when you have been buried. Let's deal with the uh, the first one. Yeah. Uh, uh. Now concerning our first issue this morning, in the light of our text from John chapter 11 verse number 20 and 21 we pick it up and we we can we can hear Martha and she's disappointed she's disappointing and telling Jesus Lord if you had been here our brother Lazarus would not have died uh, brothers and sisters let, let me just set the scene for you if you can recall Lazarus uh, Lazarus was a brother of Mary and Martha and 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 he 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 just died and in fact uh, Jesus is out on his ministry, and he's a little bit of ways, about four days off from the house of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And Martha, along with her sister Mary, just couldn't understand why it had taken Jesus so long to get to their house. Uh, why, Jesus, did it take you so long? So long for him to come and see about their brother and his friend Lazarus. So in essence now, you got, to, you got to get this this morning because in essence, Martha, what she was really saying to Jesus is, Lord, Lord, I'm just baffled. I don't
don't understand. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. I'm confused. Why did it take you so long for you to come see about my brother Lazarus? Now, Lord, I don't mean to be disrespectful to you. Uh, but, but how uh, had it been earlier, my brother would still be alive. Now, she understood that if Jesus was there, his bro her brother would be alive. So why didn't she understand even though Jesus wasn't there, her brother was still going to be alive? Lord, I'm baffled. I'm confused. I'm puzzled. I just don't understand. Well, my brothers and sisters, I I've got to ask you a question this morning. Have you ever been baffled by life? Huh? I mean, have you ever been so completely turned upside down, inside out? that you didn't know which way you were going? Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Have you ever been baffled by life? And of course, being baffled is to be in a state of being puzzled or confused. Have you ever been baffled in life? Let, let me put it this way. Have you ever been assaulted by the incomprehensible vicissitudes of life? Stuff that just weighed you down for no good reason at all? Have you ever been that way, didn't know why people were doing what they were doing? Have you ever been, uh, been wild by the words and wise of life? Have you ever been mugged by the uncalled and mendacious mystery of life? Have you ever been baffled by life? But, but, but then I've got, I, I've got to ask you today, have you ever been baffled by people? Help me, Holy Ghost. Don't, don't get quiet on me right here. I need a witness in the place. I said, have you ever been baffled by people? That is to say, have you ever, been, uh, have you had the behavior of people ever, uh, the behavior of people, have they ever blown your mind? You just looked at them and they just blown it, your mind totally and completely. People lying on you for no reason at all. Huh? Baffling. People hating on you for no reason at all. Baffling. People setting traps for you for no reason at all, baffling. But then I got uh, 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 to go a little bit deeper right here. Have you, just like Martha, ever been baffled by the Lord God himself? Uh-huh. I knew y'all would get quiet on that because y'all don't want people to know that y'all can be holy but still get baffled by God. I know. I understand it. I've been that way, too. I don't want people to know that God baffled me, but sometimes God will baffle you because his ways are not my ways. I don't understand everything that God's doing in my life, but so God has baffled me. I said, have you ever been baffled, puzzled, or confused by the Lord God himself? Well, like Martha, you just didn't understand why God allowed precious loved ones to die. Like Martha, you just did not understand why God allowed you to suffer so long. Why you have to have that thorn in your side? Why, God? Why? Like Martha, you just did not understand why God took so long for him to come and see about you, my friends. Have you just, like Martha, ever been baffled, puzzled, or confused by God himself? Well, 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 if you can answer in the affirmative to, to any of these questions, then I have a word for you this day. You can make it. Uh-huh, if you can take it, even when you just have been baffled. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, can I get somebody to say amen? Uh, yes, my brother, yes, my sister, you can make it. You can take it even when you have been baffled by life, baffled by life, baffled by people, baffled by the Lord God himself. Well, let's, let's get this principle. Uh, friends, I, I want you to realize, watch me here, watch me now, don't, don't lose me. Uh, that, that you understand it's not necessary in order for God to deliver you. He don't have to deliver you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, okay, okay. I said, you understand. Let the church say understanding. understanding. Your understanding is not necessary in order for God to deliver you. He has to bring you out of some stuff sometimes. sometimes God will deliver you by leaving you in some stuff sometimes. And you said, that ain't fair. Why God going to leave me in some stuff? I want to be delivered from this stuff. But God knows that if he bring you out, you're still going to act a fool. So he said, I'm going to leave you in it for a little while. I'm going to let you grow up for a little while. And when you get mature enough in that situation that you're in, then I'm going to bring you out of that situation. Because then you can handle what life throws at you. I said it's not necessary for you to understand what God is up to in order for him to bring you through. But what is necessary is your faith. That's necessary. 
What's necessary is your trust. What's necessary is your surrender. What's necessary is your obedience. What's necessary is your right spirit. What's necessary is the right attitude. Paul says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Proverbs 3 uh, and 5 and 6 declare, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and what? Lean not to thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall do what? He shall do what? He shall do what? Direct your path. Well, secondly, you can make it even when you've been betrayed. Am I preaching to anybody in here today? Uh, you can make it even when you have been betrayed. For in our second text, Matthew 26, 48 through 49, clearly informs us that Judas, somebody help me say Judas. Judas, one of the Lord's very own disciples, uh, look at the text, if you can, betray Jesus with the kiss, good God Almighty. I tell you, ain't nothing wrong, ain't nothing worse than a friend that eat with you, drink with you, then going to kiss you and betray you. When they come out, Judah said, the one that I kiss, mm. betrayed, betrayed, y'all, Judas, one of the twelve. Jesus handpicked him. And you talking about, well, I don't know why they, why they betrayed me like that. You didn't pick them. They picked you. <laughs> the Bible says that Judas, one of his very own, betrayed him with a kiss. Yeah, betrayed Jesus with a kiss, with an intimate sign of affection. And my brothers and sisters, I believe you know as well as I do, help me, Holy Ghost, that Judah's spirit of betrayal is still very much alive today. Do I have a witness in here? These, uh, these words of uh, 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 Ishbosheth in the Old Testament, 2 Samuel 3 and 8, really angered Abner, and he said, Am I the head of a dog huh? that belongs to Judah? This very day, I, I, I am demonstrated loyal to the house of Saul, your father, and to the relatives of his friends. I have not betrayed you in the hand of David, yet you have accused me of sinning with this woman today. Second Samuel 19, 26, my Lord, the king, he replied, my servant Ziba betrayed me. Actually, you, you, your, your servant said, I saddle the donkey of her for myself so I may ride it and go with the king for your servant is lame. Now, this lame person that he's talking about is Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth is the son of Jonathan. And Jonathan was the best friend of David. And he still betrayed him. Now, watch this. He says, for my people will kiss you one day and betray you the same evening. That's what the text says. I said, they'll kiss you one day and betray you the same evening. They won't wait till tomorrow. Come on, somebody. They'll betray you the same evening. And of course, Mount Tabor, there are all kinds of reasons why people will betray you. I said, there's all kinds of reasons. Look at your neighbor and say, all kinds. <laughs> are you going to betray me? Look at them, tell, ask them how they're going to betray you. I said, there's all kinds of reasons. And Sister Judy, you know, amen, why people will betray you? Let me tell you, folk will betray you over a hot dog. <laughs> now, you let there just be one hot dog that Mount Table fixed over in that fellowship hall. <laughs> one spoon of chili left. One spoon of slaw with some onions left. And, and you want that last hot dog, and you'll run somebody over to get that last hot dog. They will betray, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, 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 over a cat or, 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 or a parakeet or a goldfish, a Big Mac, and some, uh, some large fries. People will betray you because they are jealous. Can I get a witness in the house? People will betray you because they are envious. They want what you got, but they don't want to work for it. People will betray you because they are petty. People will betray you because they are small-minded. Because they are vengeful and because they are vindictive. People will betray you because they are insecure. People will betray you because they are, they, they, they are immature. 
People will betray you because they are backstabbing and backbiting you and undermining and undercutting. That's what they do. People, people will do that. But I've stopped by here to tell somebody, you can make it. If you take it. Even when you have been betrayed, Jesus' life, he, he, it teaches us, it teaches us some very valuable lessons concerning betrayal. Get this, because the first lesson is that betrayal is this unavoidable risk that you must take in loving and in trusting people. It's hard sometimes to love people. It's even harder to trust people. Say amen, somebody. And then, Mount Tabor, the second great lesson that Jesus teaches us about betrayal is that betrayal can never stop the believer from being victorious. Mm. I ain't going to say what I want to say, Brother Joe. So I'm going to say it like this. Church folk don't know when to shout. No, no, no. I said betrayal can never stop you as a believer from being victorious. For if you can remember concerning the, the story of Joseph, y'all remember that story? It says that they meant it for evil, but God meant it and means it for good. Hallelujah. But then finally, my friends, I would text respectfully or, or suggest that you can make it if you can take it, not only when you have been baffled, and even after you've been betrayed, but you can make it even after you've been buried. Well, somebody wake up this morning and smell the Krispy Kreme donut. Yeah, you can make it. You can take it even when you've been buried. Somebody help me say buried. You can make it even after you've been buried for, for, for our final text in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 through 4. Clearly informed by saying that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, and that was buried. And, and you know, uh, Brother Michael, it occurred to me that uh, my brothers and sisters, family and friends, and everybody else who's here, that just as Christ was buried, we have so many people in our society today who, has, who have been buried, Oh, yes, not physically buried. No, 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 not physically buried, but emotionally buried, socially buried, psychologically buried, spiritually buried, financially buried, buried by despair, buried by depression, buried by despondence, buried by fear, buried by doubt. So many people in our society today, church, have we also been buried, but saints, I'm so happy to report on today that our final text informs us that Jesus was buried, but was not resurrected. Yes, he rose. He got up. Say amen, somebody. I said, I said last, 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 the last great text of ours says that not only it informs us that Jesus was buried, but, but also informs us that he rose from the dead. For that fourth verse of 1 Corinthians 15 clearly tells us that Christ rose on the third day according to Scripture. Is there anybody in the building this morning who's glad about that? I said, is there anybody in the building today believe that this morning? Because the Scripture says that Christ rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. And, and Christ was buried and rose again on the third day. Well, here it is. And here is the point. Here is the lesson. If you've been buried by the pressures of life or whatever you can make, whatever you can make out of it, you can take it if you can take it. Because your third day is coming. Can I get a witness this morning? Somebody shout hallelujah. I said you can make it if you can take it because your third day, Brother Leonard, is coming. Well, Pastor, what is my third day? I need to know. Well, I'm glad you asked. Bill, shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, you can make it if you can take it because your third day is coming. You can make it 
if you can take it because your third day is coming. The third day is a day of victory. The third day is a day of celebration. The third day is a day of miracles. The third day is a day of healing. The third day is a day of breakthrough. The third day is a day of deliverance. The third day is a day of breakout. The third day is a day God raises you up, picks you up, turns you around, place your feet on solid ground. Your third day is, I say your third day is, your third coming. If you're ready for your third day, you ought to shout hallelujah. This third day that the Lord made, the third day is he, the Christ rose up from the dead. The third day is that he had all power in his hand. The third day is coming. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you Jesus. Oh, somebody say glory to your name. Oh, if you believe that your third day coming, you ought to tell somebody. Come on and tell your saints, tell your friend, my third day coming, whatever your third day is. I don't know what your third day is, but you know what your third day is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can make it if you can take it. Because your third day, Somebody help me say it. Your third day is coming. And I thank Jesus. Thank you, God, for your word. You can make it if you can take it. Because God has you covered. When you've been baffled, you when you've been buried, you can make it if you can take it. Give God a hand praise. Ah, I told you I wouldn't be long today. Mm -mm. But I thank God. <laughs> you just don't understand how sometimes life will throw stuff at you. And you're not always in the right mind, the right frame of mind to receive what life has to throw at you. But you, this is one thing you better know. You better know that you can make it. Don't let the devil tell you you can't. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he, he, he believed that he, Jesus wasn't going to make it out of that wilderness experience. He threw everything he had at Jesus. But Jesus had enough word in him to know that he could make it. Man should not live by bread alone. Why you tempt the Lord thy God? Why are you going to promise me something that's not even yours? You can make it if you know this word. And the only way you know this word is by getting in the word, reading it. Don't, be, don't believe what I say when I stand up here now. I'm, I'm trying not to tell a lie. You better read that scripture for yourself. That way when I do tell a lie, you don't say amen. You just say, Pastor, you lied. <laughs> don't believe any preacher. Read it for yourself. Confirm it for yourself. And then say amen. amen. Don't just say amen because we say say amen. Know the word. Because if you know the word, you can make it. You can make it. There's been times there, man, woman, girl, boy. Whew, I didn't know if I was going to make it. But I called on the name of God. And he reassured me, what does the word say, Porter? Read the word. And God will give you the answer in his word. He's a good God. He's a gracious God. And I thank God for who he is. Amen. Amen and amen. Let us stand for our affirmation of faith. I believe
direction of the body. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we remember the words of Jesus Christ. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Thanks be to God for all the gifts and offerings freely given on this day. Now, God of life and hope, we have brought our gifts today because we are grateful beyond words for your love, which has washed away our sins. And you made us your own. Now, bless these gifts that we brought before you, Father God, that they may be used for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue to bow our heads, Father God. We just thank you for your bountiful gifts that you've given us. We thank you for molding us and for loving us that we may serve you. We thank you, eternal God and Father, who by power we were created and whose love we are redeemed. And by whom this, your love sustain us, guide and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit. That we may give ourselves to you and your service and live a day to live this day to love one another the way that you love us, Father God, because the Lord is spirit. And whatever the spirit, wherever the spirit is, the Lord is, and there is freedom. So, dear Lord, we may that we may realize afresh today what your death and resurrection mean to us and meant for us, Father God, forgiveness, freedom, and ability to walk with you through the fallen, this fallen world into eternity. May we always find satisfaction in you, your willingness to offer yourself to us. Lord, we just thank you right now, Father God. We thank you for being our wonderful counsel, our mighty God, our everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. You are, and you may everything. And so we thank you, Lord Jesus. So God, I come and stand right now telling you that I surrender my life to you. You can have it all. Every thought, every action, every desire. I want you to be glorified through me. So here I am, Lord. Take me and use me and send me and change me. Clean me up. Transform me and love that I may love others. And love others through you. Take all that I am and purge me and wash me white as snow. Fix me that I may be available for somebody, Father God. Despite all the things that are overwhelming, victory is ours through Christ Jesus, who loved us. And I am convinced right now that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither fears, our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. So, Father, as we stand here or sit here with our heads bowed down, looking to you for where our help comes from, Father God, we want to call on some names this morning. We want to call on the Fantastic Four, Father God. Bless them in a mighty way. Let your Holy Spirit reign in their lives. Let it fall fresh on them right now. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh on Sister Tara Reed and Mary Parker and Alice Whitfield Pittman and Sylvia Young, Father God. We pray, Father God, that your spirit will fall on Levon Witherspoon, James and Nancy Stewart, Michael and Virginia Tate, those suffering from dementia and, 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 and their caregivers who are standing in the gap for them right now. We pray, Father God, for Sister Vanessa Higgins and her husband, Father God. We pray, Father God, for Hazel Horton and Alicia Wilson, Cypress Lipford and Jerry Spring family, Father God, we pray for strength and encouragement right now. We pray for Amber Miller, Sister Thea's daughter. We pray for Autumn Harris and Jasmine and the Graham family. Pray for those currently incarcerated. Let's not forget to pray for those that are typically forgotten. We pray for Xavier Higgins and Quentin Marshall. We pray right now, Father God. For all these names and many names that we didn't call out, Father God, we pray for reconciliation in families, Father God. We pray, Father God, for those families that seem to be falling apart, Father God, but we know your word said you can make it if you can take it. 
But if you trust in God and believe in God with all of your heart, you can make it. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how difficult it may seem to be going in your life right now, in your families right now. You can make it if you can take it. And you can take it with God on your side because God's word said, I've got you covered. And if you believe God's got you covered, let the, let the devils from hell throw whatever they want at you. Because God got you covered. So, Father, help us to practice what we have learned here today. Bless us as we leave this place and help us to be a blessing to everyone that we meet and interact with. Help us never to forget that you're with us always. And we pray right now, Father God, as you taught your disciples in Matthew 6. You taught them how to pray when they didn't understand. You told them to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If there's someone, before we do the Lord's Supper this morning, if there's someone in here this morning who want to give their life to God or rededicate their life to God this morning, please come now and give your life to God and, and get in right, the right fellowship with God right now. Because I would hate for you to leave this service and you're not in the right re relationship with God or the right fellowship with God and you walk out of here and your life is gone. My desire is that everybody make it in the kingdom of God. That's my desire as a servant of God. I want everybody to make it. I want to see everybody's smiling faces when we cross over that line in the heavens. And St. Peter gate opened up and God said, come on in. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to see everybody that I worship with, all my brothers and sisters. So if you feel that you've not been saved or if you feel you just need to rededicate your life to God, Come now and do that. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath because it's getting late in the evening, church. It's getting late, and we don't know. Sister Dolores and I was talking this morning, and we see the signs of time. We see the signs that the Bible talked about. They're being fulfilled right now, and we don't want to get caught with some business undone. So if you feel and believe, you need to come, please come. Amen. Now we come to observe the Lord's Supper. And I say this just about every Sunday. It's not about you doing everything right and being righteous. This is not given because you do everything right. Because guess what? We don't. But this is given because we want to remember what Christ Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross. He died for our sins. He was buried. He was put in an old barry tomb. And you know what he did? He allowed that stone to be rolled back so that we could come in. And I'm so grateful that he rolled that stone back and gave me a chance to come into his love and grace and his, his mercy so we come to remember what Christ did for us. And the word of God says, and when the hour was come, he sat down with his disciples, with him, his apostles, with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you. For I say unto you, I shall not eat it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And, and he received a cup, and when he gave it, he said, thanks, and said, take and eat. Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I shall not drink from henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the cup in like manner after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, even that which is poured out before you. And then he said a strange quote. He said, the one that is with me on the table will be, betray me. He will leave and betray 
me. But yet God said, remember this. And I'm still, even though I know you're going to betray me, I'm still going to sit here and eat with you. What a mighty God we serve. To know that his life is hinging on a kiss. And he's still willing to save Judas. And he's willing to save each and every one of us. So we do this so he, so because we remember him. So as we get ready to take this Lord's Supper and break this bread. Oh, we got a biscuit. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to break this biscuit in two. Uh, uh -huh. This right here represents his broken body. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. Now, we know that his body was not broken because that fulfilled the scripture. It said no bones will be broken. But this represents his body that was on Calvary's cross. And then he went on to say uh, with them, and he said, this represents my blood that was shed for you on Calvary's cross. And we know that one drop of his blood cleansed the entire world. Like the psalm writer said, purge me with your blood. And he'll, he'll say, wash me as white as snow. So as we continue to observe the Lord's Supper, the Bible says that this is the bread that came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died, but he that eateth this bread shall live forever. Let us break and eat. And according to the law, I might almost say all things are cleansed with blood and apart from the shedding of blood, there is no remission of our sins. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from our sins. Let us drink. With often, often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. I know it was the blood. Yes, I know it was the blood. Yes, I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Well, they pierced him in the side. Well, they pierced him in the side. Well, they pierced him in the side for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Well, he never said a mumbling word. Well, he never said a mumbling word. Well, he never said a mumbling word for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. Amen. If we can have our ushers to come forward. Amen. Let us stand for the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you false before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 
To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Let everybody say amen, amen, amen and amen.